Fast Forward Productions. The women are speaking. Guys, can I just say we are not worthy for today's guest. Today's guest is somebody who I have worked with. She's been a client of mine since 2021, January 2021, so two and a half years. And I have seen her go from, and I think she would admit this, you know, a bit of like a scattered artist into a business owner with multiple successful artistic journeys. You've seen her in a Netflix movie called Purple Heart. Her music is some of my favorite music on Spotify. I have it in all of the Me Time playlists. Her alter ego, Wesa, H-U-E-S-A. She's going on tour with her other music project, her band. She has a portal of wellness exercises that she sells to massive businesses so that they have some benefits and perks to offer their people. It's just unbelievable how much she has adapted and changed. And she's really grasped on to the Team AP methodologies of having multiple revenue streams, growing slowly and adding one, growing slowly and adding one. And she's in such a beautiful space. And I think that even if you're not an artist, you will have takeaways. Even if you aren't a performer, you will learn from this. It is truly unbelievable to see somebody so young doing so much in her space and mainly because she's being patient even when it's hard. She's working even when it's hard. I love Kate so much. She is just a hug as a person. I can't wait for you to get to know her. So let's dive into the episode. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this episode of The Unfiltered Entrepreneur because we have the lovely Kate Bone with us today. Welcome, Kate. Thanks for having me, Ashley. So happy to be here. Now, Kate, you and I have been working together for a long time, so I know your entire life story at this point, but why don't we give a little bit of an intro to the folks at home? Okay, for sure. Hi, everybody. Ashley and I go way back, like what, two years now? What do you think? Long, longer. It Whoa, has to be longer. Three years? Yeah, almost three years. No, no. It wouldn't have been three years, though, because I did. Yeah, it must have been January 2021. That was it. Yeah, so a little over. Wow, two and a half years. Two years. That's amazing. I love that. We've been, we've been working together. We've been working together, y'all. And Ashley pulled me up from the trenches, but I'm sure we're going to get into that. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that, I, so yes, yeah, so we've been working, you know, you've been a client of the Team AP space for a very long time. And in one of your businesses, because you have multiple different passions of yours, you are the living embodiment of a multi-passion entrepreneur where you have what started as yoga business is now like, let's say, a wellness business. It's much more holistic. It's movement. It's meditation. Correct me if I'm wrong. But outside of that, you also have these creative circles that you manage. But you are also, and I know that you're not going to like this, but I, you know that I'm your biggest fan of your singing career like you are okay so here's the thing you guys Kate and I had worked together for so long like building this embodiment studio that she runs and obviously all her and me like they're helping and you know guiding but and then she was like oh yeah well I'm a singer and I feel like there's so many creatives in my space right someone's an actor someone's a painter someone's a singer you kind of get like dulled down by it where you're like oh cool that's great right and you don't expect everybody to be as good as they are and then they start sharing their gifts and you're like you're fucking incredible and then kate shares her music with me she's my favorite artist oh ashley that's really sweet thank you <laughs> you are thank like you. am i allowed to talk about your album yeah yeah for sure okay so tell us about wesa because wesa is one of your album alter egos and this album i'm not kidding on repeat for weeks like i've turned so many people onto this album because in it it's what six songs it's an ep right yeah it's six songs that was the first one yeah we have another one coming out but uh, i think we're gonna drip it as singles over time so it's so good tell us about this alter ego because i think it's a really cool encapsulation that even entrepreneurs if they're not creative quote unquote which you are but you know i think everyone can kind of take advantage of this like can I just be somebody different so that I can live out this like passion that I have inside of me? Oh my gosh, totally. I never even thought about it. It wasn't until, yeah, I think once we created it and then I realized that this was an alter ego and I realized what we were doing. I feel like once you're in the throes of 
activity, you don't really know what you're doing. And then you get to the other side and you're like, oh, this is a totally other thing. But yeah, WESA is one of my music projects that was started during the pandemic in 2020 with a dear friend of mine, Froggy is her artist and producer name. And during the pandemic, it was such a, that's when I met you, Ashley. I met you in 2021, but during the pandemic was such a moment for me as an artist. I'm multi-hyphenate. I'm an actor, a singer, a writer. And I've been teaching yoga and meditation for like 10 years as like my baseline as a human to like be okay <laughs> as an no, artist. I'm honestly, like I'm listening to you and I'm like, you do it all. Like, Aww, first of all, babe. you're in a movie on Netflix, which I watched. And I was like, I know her. <laughs> Purple Hearts. Everybody go watch it. Yeah. So good, by the way. Thanks, babe. You kill it. But I'm like, she's on Netflix. She's on Spotify. She's got like a business that she's selling things to corporate businesses. She has things that she's supporting creatives. Like, it's unbelievable. I totally just cut you off. But like hearing you talk about it, I'm just like, I'm so proud of you. Thank you, honey. And like, yeah, to your audience, to like the folks who are listening, because I know you have a major like entrepreneur base, like you don't have to be just one thing. Like, and I feel like I'm living proof of that. And I worked in the dark Mm -hmm. for a long time before any of this stuff came to light. And maybe we can talk about that. But like, you can do anything and everything and like hard work really works. And I feel like that's one of the things that I really resonate with you about. Like you're in so many spaces. Like I was actually just going to tell you because I'm going on tour with one of my other music projects and I was just in Sephora yesterday and I needed to like get makeup to like be okay on tour. And I literally bought like all of your recommendations. I know you have like clients in Sephora. You have clients in Sephora. You're like, doing me time. You're doing it all too. So I feel like you've been a really great mentor and role model for me and really opening up those doors. And I know you and I have had so many conversations where I'm like, is this too big? Like, is this too much? Like, can I really do it? And you're like, yes, yes, yes. If you're not you, who? If not now, when? Like, go for it. So you have been in my corner being like, girl, you can do all this. And like, I really feel like I'm in th- year three of Wonderwell. And like year 13 of my like professional artist career, I really feel like I'm just at the beginning and things are Don't just you though? finally starting to click. Like I'm finally really starting to understand how my brain works, how my creative brain works, how my neurodivergence works, like how doing business as an empath and a highly sensitive person, like how all that works in. So I feel like I'm just now like getting to know myself, really getting rooted in my values and it all like. So much of it comes from me working with mentors. I have so many mentors and teachers in like very specific areas. And you've been that for me in this area of like business. And I would say I'm like, well, I showed you math. You showed me how to do math, you guys. (laughs) Wait, we need to tell this story. (laughs) No, it's one of my favorite stories. And I really hope it like lifts off the page because it was such a funny moment between us. (laughs) You guys, I'm hoping it's translated. So basically, I was a theater major at UCLA, okay? And the main reason, first of all, if I can just toot my own horn for a second, I got into my three top choices of art schools. I could have gone to USC, NYU, or UCLA, which is kind of insane. Like, that doesn't really happen. So I could have had a whole, like, New York alter ego, whatever. What did I do? I picked the public university where I didn't have to take a math class. Right, right. You're like, please, please, please don't. I didn't have to take math to get my degree. And I've been like afraid of math my whole life. Okay, so if you're a creative listening to this, you need to know like you can do math. (laughs) It's possible. (laughs) You can do math, I promise. Because, okay, so two things I want to say up top. But like Ashley taught me strategy. She taught me not to blame myself, but to blame the strategy. And like, it's not you. it's It's the strategy. And I remember getting on a call with you where I like came with all my whole, I call it my constellation, my universe of like all these different things that I do. And I like dumped it all on you in like a one-on-one session. I was like, so I do a little bit of this and I do a little bit of that. And I don't know how much to charge here. And I don't know what to do with that. And you just like looked at it all and you were like, okay, what if we did this? What if we made this a membership? What if we charged this? What if you booked four of those a month? What if you did this? And you just like did math before my very eyes. And I've never seen my life like that before. I've never seen a babe who's like so cute and hot and fun, like do math with me on a call. I was like, this is really, really incredible. And we laughed so hard. And now that's one of our ongoing jokes that like, 
math. It's one of our ongoing jokes. Kate went on Instagram and she was like, Ashley did math right in front of my eyes. And for me, it's just so funny because like that would be like someone saying like, Kate strummed the guitar in front of me. You know, like it's just like so much how I work mm. is like math and Excel spreadsheets. So it was just, it was really funny. But I want to go back to what you were talking about, how you were like, I'm a creative who's doing business, but I'm also, if, you know, I feel like I'm at the beginning, but I'm definitely not. So I'm curious which came first, the chicken or the egg? Was it, I feel so embodied with my yoga work. I want to monetize this so that I can have this creative space. Or was it in order to have this creative space, I have to be monetizing elsewhere? Like as a creative, are you looking for something to subsidize costs and like make up that money elsewhere? Or are you like, I want to go make money so I have space for my creative craft? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So the sort of timeline story of it was, was that my first year of college at UCLA was a shit show. Okay. My first year of college, I was like a little girl from the suburbs. I had no tools on how to regulate my nervous system. Man, I'm a highly sensitive person. I have really big emotions. I had no way to manage my emotions. I was making dangerous decisions that almost landed me in jail. Like, it was not cute. And I somehow, after my freshman year of UCLA, I found myself in a yoga teacher training program. And the thought that got me into it is, oh, this will be a great side job for me to do while I'm auditioning in L.A. before I get my big break. And my freshman year, I had also, I was really battling a lot of imposter syndrome. Like I mentioned, the programs I got into are elite level. There were literally, it was a 3% acceptance rate into my program. Math. That's a, that's a number. That's <laughs> a number. That's a new percentage. So I got there and I had major imposter syndrome. I was like, I don't mm. belong here. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I was good in my high school, but can I really hack it in Hollywood? I'm at UCLA. I'm in the heart of like Bel Air. I'm like, what am I doing? Right. Which led into the aforementioned shit show. So I go to this, I go to this yoga teacher training and I think that it's just going to be like, okay, let me just, I, th I think it's going to be choreography. Honestly, I was like, oh, I'm just going to learn how to like tell people like, put your hand here, put your leg there, do this, do that. And I'll be a cute little instructor and I can make like a premium rate you know, instead of like waiting tables or bartending or whatever, like I don't have those skills. So I was like, oh, let me learn this skill or whatever. It's healthy. And it changed my life, like truly. Like wow. it was an upside down 180 complete framework for me, the yoga philosophy. And I had the very, very good fortune. This was in 2000. This was in 2010. So honestly, yoga teacher trainings were not that common then, even though that doesn't seem like a long time ago. I found myself in a straight up ashram in San Francisco and my teacher like lives in India like most of the time. And so he was like teaching oh us like legit, like I'm learning Sanskrit. I'm chanting the Sanskrit alphabet. I, I never knew this. this. Yeah. I am like learning this yoga sutras. I'm, lear I'm learning Patanjali's eight limbs of yoga and the yoga philosophy. All the stuff that you really honestly don't get in modern Western yoga studios. And I honestly thought, because I was struggling so much in Hollywood, I really thought, you know what, I might not be an actor and I actually might not be an artist because, look, I have this whole path. I can keep working with my teachers. I can keep teaching. I can really make an impact. I can keep studying. I was just in love, you know? And I go back to UCLA and I was not really finding my groove. I was not finding my vibe. And then I just, and I, and I almost dropped out and went to India. And my parents were like, girl, we have worked so hard to help you get into this program. Like, please do not leave school to go to India. Like, please. <laughs> and so I stayed mostly for my parents at that point. And then I met my mentor, Monica Payne, who directed a production where she has a huge yoga background and an ensemble theater background. And she brought them together and she would start every rehearsal process with something called sacred space. And we would all lay on the floor and get into our breath and we would start our creative work from like a really grounded, connected place. And I saw the way that we were able to create in the room because we had taken the time to ground our bodies and our nervous systems. 
And that was the sign I needed where I was like, okay, this is it. It's going to be both. We're doing both. Mm. And which is also such a sign of like that other people can learn from because like for those listening, if you're like, oh, but I'm not a theater person or I'm not acting or I'm not in a creative profession or I don't do yoga or whatever, those things that like opt you out of what you're talking about, what you're actually saying is I found a practice that lent itself to being present and staying in the moment and get staying focused on what do I have to do that's right in front of me so that you can go do the job. And I don't mean to look overlook how incredibly grounding it felt and how it helped like contribute to your art. But I think there's something to be said outside of the specifics yes. that it was such an incredibly powerful thing to say, okay, I have X, Y, Z to do, whether that means that we're performing or you have discovery calls or client calls. But to take a B and say, let's be here, let's arrive, let's calm ourselves, and let's move forward. Yeah. You know, I think there's something to be said about how connected that is to all journeys. Mm-hmm. 100%. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be soul cycle. It could be taking a breath on your balcony. It could be like what you have with me time, like the journaling, the like essential oil, like a playlist, a dance party in your living room, like honestly figuring yeah. out like whatever your way in is. That was the thing. I was like, oh, you need to find the thing that helps you do the thing. And also for anybody listening who feels like maybe you're in a industry where it's like, oh, I'm in Hollywood. There's no room for spirituality here. Or, oh, I'm in fashion. There's no room for amplifying female founders here or whatever you like, whatever the story is. It's like you can absolutely blend to opposite worlds. And I find there's honestly a lot of similarities to it. And then there's also ways where they really balance each other out. Absolutely. And it reminds me of kind of what you're doing now, because I, honestly, like you're such a great example of somebody who started feeling like you were in mess. I was in a mess. Chaos. I was in a total mess. <laughs> you weren't though. You weren't though. You felt it. Yeah. But I was looking at you like, no, 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 no. You might be sitting around a ton of clothes, but all you have to do is just like fold them and put them in their drawers. Like it's going to take 10 minutes. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I saw where you were going so clearly that you were like, no, I live among the dirty laundry. And I'm like, fold it and put it away because I knew where you were going and I knew how you could like elevate this. But it's so hard in the moment to think that there's a better and easier way to do things and that it gets easier. And I want to talk a little bit about that mindset reframe of like, I'm allowed to earn. I'm allowed to have abundance. I'm allowed to ask for what I want because you shifted when we started working together, not to like give too much away and let me know if I cross a line. But You know, when you started, you were doing yoga at home with people. Mm -hmm. And I started to say, if you're doing the same yoga practice for all these people, can you tape it and build a library and charge a membership Mm -hmm. fee? And you kind of had this mind blowing moment of like, am I allowed to do that? And I want to talk a little bit about like that moment, because I think that kind of pivoted you into a new stage of entrepreneurship, which may have, and I'm curious, unlocked a new part of your creativity. So The question is kind of like, what was that experience like of saying, I have to charge X, Y, Z for yoga classes because I have to make money and then realizing there's such an expansive opportunity that I'm overlooking? 100%. No, that's a great point to go off of because that conversation that you and I had was such an expansive moment for me as a creator and as somebody who generally like is a service provider. And I think Mm -hmm. I always had this thing of like, well, I want to serve everyone. I really want to help everyone. And, you know, in my ashram days, it was like, I just want to give this away for free, (laughs) you know, and then having to really hit the moment where it's like, shoot, like we can't do that only. Like we have to like earn money. Yeah, because eventually you resent the people that you wanted to help in the first place because you're not getting money from them and you're pouring so much into it. I tell people all the time, if you want to help people for the longest time, you have to charge. Otherwise, you're going to get so burned out not making any money that you're like, I'm done. 
Yeah. And I think like people need an expert like you were for me to like sit across the table from you and be like, yes, this is the right market value for your product. This is right. Go out and charge that amount. And I think also when we started, I'm just going to get vulnerable here. I had a lot of like codependency issues and like people pleasing issues. And like I was so scared to like be like, hi, this is my class. Like this is how much it is. Like, is that okay with you? And I was just like so scared somebody was going to be like, well, who are you? And how do you have the right to charge that? And da 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 da. But really what would happen is I would be like, oh, this is my rate. And they'd be like, okay, can I do a pack of five? (laughs) Can you come every Monday? You know, and I'd be like, what? (laughs) You know, yeah, you're like, oh, my God, it worked. Definitely. But like, I think I hit a wall. And to go back, I guess, to your first question, which was like, how do they flow together of like the teaching and the artistry mm, right, and all of that to weave that in is like when I had met you. So before the pandemic hit, I was teaching 20 in-person yoga and meditation classes a week. I had actually already graduated out of teaching at studios and I was teaching only for companies and privately to celebrities and like very high-end clients in Los Angeles because that was the only way that I could sustain my life in Los Angeles. And I was like dying inside because I was like, it sucks that I have to charge upwards of like $100 an hour to like teach yoga to one person. Like the part of me that really wanted to make an impact was like, God, I'm only getting to see 20 people. Like I'm only getting, yeah. And when I worked with companies, of course, I would get to like work with more people, but it was just like, gosh, I really just feel like I'm not reaching enough people. I had experienced some symptoms as well of like, I was losing my voice from teaching so Mm. many classes. And as a singer, I was like, oh, this is bad. I need to figure out how I'm going to teach and earn a living. I had also, I got jury duty. I was so hand to mouth with everything. Like I didn't have a savings process. I didn't have any real infrastructure when things were coming in. So I got jury duty and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't pay rent if I don't see my clients for a week. If I get put on this jury, I can't pay rent. And that was like an alarm bell moment for me. And so then when you and I just thought, oh, I have to get more high end clients, more high end clients. And then when I talked to you, you were like, actually, you could film this stuff, put it in a portal, put it at a low price that's like accessible for more people. You can make more money. You don't have to drive your car four hours a day in Los Angeles. You can have this portal where people have a membership and you manage it and you upload new content and I get to be creative. I get to have more time and space to like practice, learn more, bring more to my students. I was such, I was in a place where I was like, I don't feel like I can even learn because I'm just like working so much. I don't feel like I can really expand because I'm just like lifting people's legs around, you know? And now it's so nice when I do get to do one-on work with people. I have so much energy and capacity that I'm really able to make a bigger impact there. So you really showed me how I could like make more and have more of an impact and have honestly a more sustainable and regenerative life. Well, and because it's so tough because a lot of people, especially women, and I don't want to be super generalizing, but, you know, in my experience, particularly women, we want to just give and give and give and give and give, you know, and we want to like pour out. And I experienced that. And then what happens if you are not charging enough Mm. and if you are not making the money, then you are just bleeding out. And then you start to almost think in your head, like subconsciously, not consciously, we almost subconsciously start to think like, fuck you. Like, I don't want to do this. Like, I hate this. I hate you guys. And now you have stopped the impact that you want to make because you were trying to make an impact with the savings that they were going to be making. And, you know, there is such a power in like just charging enough at least. And you did build that portal. You do have those recordings that is open to the public, which is so exciting. And you're selling that to B2B businesses. Now you have this portal of wellness opportunities, of benefits that businesses can buy into to offer to their full time employees while you're touring with your second music project, with your first music project coming back around. We see you on TV. It's like, It just kind of goes to show that like when everything is done in a way that supports you, you're supported to do what you want. Mm. 
You know what I mean? 100%. Like, just hearing you say that, I'm having, like, a moment. I'm like, I think I needed to have this call right before I go on tour to be like, wow, things are really working. And, like, I think I told you I hired an assistant to, like, help me with the portal. So, like, while I'm on tour, I have somebody. So, if somebody's having an issue with, like, needing to access their recordings or whatever, I have, like, a support email. And I have a lovely human being who's, like, able to take care of my people when I'm like out doing my thing, shining my light. So it's just really, really exciting what can happen in three years. My life is very, very different now than when I first met you. And it's, I'm just so excited to keep going. My God, I truly believe like it's only the beginning. I feel it. And the thing is, The beginning for you, to me, like you were working, like, let's not get it twisted, guys. Kate's been busting her ass the past few years, like busting her ass. But these first couple of years were honestly like prep, you know, it was like throwing spaghetti at the wall, trying to find your way, getting the portal set up, which was clearly time consuming, you know, landing on pricing and really fine tuning that market research where now I feel like everything has its place and the only way is up, which is just the most exciting part. And it's so hard at the beginning because you're like, am I allowed to do this? And I'm curious, like, did you have like a money disconnect where you were like, I feel weird earning money because it's easy or like, did any of that come up for you? Because I feel like that sometimes happens too with people who want to give is they're like, am I allowed to make a lot of money? (laughs) Am I allowed to do that? Yeah. Well, I think in any stage of growth, which entrepreneurship is a path of growth and change Mm -hmm. and evolution, and so is the creative path and entrepreneurship is creative. And so I think with any process of growth, you have to constantly come up against limiting beliefs. And yeah, you just got to keep moving through them and working with them. And as they come up, like, have a process to handle them. I was just trying to think of like, yeah, I think the biggest limiting belief that comes up for me is, am I allowed to have this be easy? Like, am I allowed to do what is truly my gift, which is whether it's embodiment or whether it's creative consulting or creative work, My gift is to help people see where in their flow things are blocked and creatively problem solve to get that moving. And I do it as a yoga instructor watching people's bodies and I do it with creatives, like listening to them talk about their process. And it's so easy for me. It's my gift. It's intuitive. It's my gift. And I've also done a ton of training to like hone those skills and tune I was gonna say, Let's not dial down the massive amount of learning no, that you've done over the past No, for sure. Week. Like a massive, massive amount of learning. But when I'm in the flow of it, it's very effortless. And that is freaky. I was just writing on my Instagram stories today. I was like, I'm a descendant of German farmers. Like we are down <laughs> to just like get on our knees and just like work and like There's something about that that feels really comfortable for me. And then there's something about having systems and having flow and being able to step away and like waking up to a notification that I've like got money just deposited in my account overnight from my clients who are getting what they need. Like, I'm just like, does it, am I allowed to like, is it allowed for it to be this easy? Yeah, I've, I've felt that too sometimes when I'm like, Like, okay, so last year, 2022, I had built up so much MRR of payment plans that uh, of future work because I don't do payment plans for past work. And I was making like 50, 60 grand a month for work I wasn't doing yet. Right. So I was doing maybe like one big project a month, but making 60 grand. And I took off so much time last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I worked maybe a quarter of the whole year Mm. total. I took off almost the entire month of April, almost the entire month of August. I don't think I really worked at all November and December. Let's be totally honest. I definitely didn't work in January this year. And a lot of that is because of this like built up MRR. And at the very beginning, I was like, but if I stop working, then I won't have money. And I was like, no, you built this system. Like you can relax. And it was the first time where I was like, this is freedom this is freedom, that I can relax, I can disconnect, I can stop taking clients, I can Mm. take a pause, I can travel, I can do whatever, and I don't have to think about money. 
it was just so freeing. And I almost felt guilty that I had figured it out. And it made me empowered to be like, I need other people to figure it out, which is why you see people like so passionately sharing, this works, this works, this works. And it's tough because you listen to people and you're like, it works, so I'm going to try it. And I know you and I have had conversations where I'm like, you should do this. And then you're like, you almost feel bad oh not God. listening to my advice. We you feel totally bad not did listen- have that call where I was like, I think it was in my corporate work or something. Oh, yeah, because was. I'm always exactly trying. Okay, guys, this is what it is. This is my complex. I'm always trying to be hands on. And so even when I onboard one of my corporate partners to come into the Wonderwell Embodiment Studio, I still want to do live classes with them. Like I want to like see them. I want to talk to them. I want to give them like I want to do quarterly like wellness workshops like within their company. And I Ashley has literally had to tell me on multiple occasions. She's like, Kate, why can't they just like pay for the library? Like, why can't you just like get 10 clients? at whatever amount a month, like just paying you just for the portal, which is stuff that you've done that live in the, my, I always call it like my teachings that are like living outside of my body. <laughs> why can't you make 10 grand a month off of that? Why can't you make 20 grand, 30 grand, 40? Like, why not? Like you're helping a company at a price point that works for them. Maybe they can't deal with live stuff on their company schedule. Maybe that's just not the vibe, but they want people to be supported. I'm like, she's like, who are you to deny them of that? I was like, oh, that's a big reframe. <laughs> you use that well, restaurant not- analogy. I don't know if you I love the restaurant Have analogy. you said that on the podcast? Yeah. I have said so much shit so many places that I have lost track. So if you don't know, maybe I'll just do a separate podcast. Okay, about for the sure. Restaurant and Guys, go look and for how it. about the restaurant? I'll even put it in my calendar <laughs> that the day after this podcast goes live, I will tell you guys about the restaurant Ooh, analogy because truly, I think it's one of my best analogies. It's really good. I really do. But the thing that she's talking about is the fact that like we should not be able to decide for people what's best for them and, you know, denying people the opportunity to buy in at a rate or a an experience that's correct for them. But what's interesting is that I think, you know, you and I working together and what I what I was kind of building to is this idea that like I get really passionate about what works for me because it worked so in a big, big way. Take yeah. six thousand dollars. And not work is a huge thing. It's huge, it's huge. right? That's a massive, I want to tell everybody in the world. Now, granted, I was paying a team. I think my team expenses were like 15, 20 grand at the time. I'm not going to act like I was keeping all that money. But it was a massive win. And so obviously, I'm going to be super loud about it. But then people like me get loud about something that really works. And then people like Kate or like people in the doers or clients of mine think, I want to do what Ashley said because it worked for her and she's so passionate about it. But you and I have had times when you've said like, it just doesn't work for me or like, I don't know if that's going to work for me. And I think it's a testament and it's something that I'm really trying to lean on in this new phase of my business. All advice is correct, but it's on us to decide what advice is correct for us. And I think that that's something that you and I have kind of like really found a good place of like communication is that you can say, I don't know if that'll work for me. And then I'll say, ooh, well, what if we try this? And it's a really, we've gotten such a strong mentor-mentee relationship now, which I'm really proud of. Yeah, and I had to really check myself. You know, I, I, I agree, Ashley. I love what you just said. I had to check myself on, because I'm a reflector in human design. So whoever I'm around, I really get their imprinting. And so when we were working together, I started thinking like, oh, I have to build my business the way Ashley's is. And then I started like doing that. I was like, oh, that is not my lifestyle. That's not what I'm doing. I need to like come back to my center. I need to feel into my body. What are my priorities? It's to have enough, be able to make my art and be able to be of service. And like, I really personally, as an artist, I really need to keep that at the center of like, to go all the way back to your first question is like, I absolutely have created these other streams of income to support my art, which is literally priority number one. Literally, I will actually not be okay if I'm not making my art. So I have yeah. to make money in other ways because I don't wait. I'm not waiting for the phone. I'm producing my own work. I've been producing my own work for the last 13 years. I am phenomenal. Thank you. And so 
I have constantly, I have so many ideas that will not leave me alone. I feel like I cannot, I don't have enough time to do all the creative work I want to do. And so you showing me pathways of being able to create income that doesn't require my physical presence or lock me into a time container has been game changing. And I also need to keep that centered in the bigger picture in the ecosystem. Because when I was doing a lot of like pitching to corporate and all this stuff, I was just like, oh my gosh, like I'm not making enough art. So in a certain way, like I had to like scale back how quickly I'm scaling my business because I'm going on tour, because I'm auditioning a ton, because I'm, I need tons of time and space to just write and to do my practices and to work with my teachers and to do my embodiment work. And creatives need time to do nothing. And we also need a ton of time to train and practice, which isn't compensated really. So for me to be able to come into a level to do a Netflix movie after literally not doing a movie for three years, that, uh, that Purple Hearts audition was the only audition I got in the pandemic and I booked it. And so yeah. for me to be able to come into the only audition I got and just book it, like I have to be doing so much work underground. And so I've had to be ready for that. To be ready for that. So I have, and I just want to let everybody know, I've really had to slow down. And my whole thing now is slow growth, very intentional growth. And in with I move the quickest. You're very when fast. I'm moving yeah, that's really funny. Actually, that is really funny. You know, I, I, it's true. I move the quickest when I'm moving the slowest. Yeah. Like truly when I, stretch out my timelines to an uncomfortable length is when everything happens and it happens fast. And the reason why I say it happens fast, smooth is fast, mm -hmm. right? Smooth is quick and quick is slow. So for instance, if we had like, think of like a, like a parking lot, okay? Let's say there's like a smooth area in a parking lot, but then let's say there's another part of a parking lot that has these like road bumps. The, what are those called? I don't drive. Speed bumps? Speed bumps. <laughs> oh, well, she doesn't even have her driver's license. They don't have a driver's license, guys. I haven't driven in like 10 years. So you have those speed bumps, right? If you go slowly over those speed bumps, you might be moving slowly, but you get through them generally quickly. And the reason why I say that is because if you fly through them, a tire could pop off. You could hurt part of your car and now you have to pull over and you have to get towed and you have to get this thing fixed. And that's significantly slower than just taking your time yeah. over the speed bumps. And so moving slowly, like I remember when I was first starting out, everybody was like, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. And I was like, I'm going to do each one thing new per quarter. That's always been my rule mm. since the day that I started one new thing per quarter, nothing more and nothing less. Always one new thing per quarter. So I would see people where they would be like, next quarter, I'm going to launch a group program and then I'm going to launch my one-on-one -on -one service and then I'm going to launch this download. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm just doing one. I'm just one of those things. Like, that's it. And so one thing per quarter and I would watch other people and they would be moving, quote unquote, so much quicker than me. But now I'm the one with four businesses that are all making me money. Some of them that are making me money passively where I just skim a little bit off the top every single month. And... I have the full-time team and I'm signing the big clients. We have really massive things we're doing with me time. And they're still trying to close one-on-one -on -one client. And that's not me talking shit on anyone. It's an observation that really fast growth in the short term can hurt the long term. And I've always been someone who I'm like, I don't want to win today. I want to win mm. in the future. I want to win in, in a year. I want to win in six months so that I'm building in a way where I can sleep in and I can take weekends off and I can spend time with my girlfriends and I don't have to be glued to the computer unless I want to be and I'm feeling empowered to. And that's the only way that I can stay in this business for 10 years is to live that lifestyle every day, mm. you know? And even just what you dropped in there about just thinking quarterly, a big part of what I brought into Wonderwell Creative side was this seasonal commitments, seasonal creative commitments. Mm. And for me as a creative, the flow is there. 
there needs to be these two opposite forces. There's the form and the flow. And so really, you know, what you're talking about at this structure of one quarter, this is what I'm going to do for this amount of time. This is what I'm going to do for this amount of time. Being intentional about that. I feel like I had a lot of flow and you really helped me to get more structure, get more strategy, really understand what is achievable, what is manageable. My whole journey just last year was like, how can I feel fulfilled at the end of a day when I have so many ongoing creative projects that always need something. Do you have a way to do that, like a rule you've set? Well, I try to do the top three. So that's what I do. So yeah, I can only do three things a day. Yeah. And then lately I, and you also taught me how to batch tasks and like when I'm tapping Mm. into different parts of my brain, which has been incredible. And now I have this new flow where like I wake up, I'll usually do my a morning routine. And then I go in what I call the grunge and grind where I'm just like grungy, like in my computer with my hair in a messy bun, just like handling mm-hmm. whatever like easy, like deliverable to do's, like send that email, make that thing, write that thing, send that off, create that thing, make that graphic, like whatever it is, it's like computery. And then I just fully take a break in the middle of my day, I'll either go to a workout class, try to get out of the house, go on a walk. I'll like make my own lunch for a while. I might sit outside. I might play my guitar. Right now I'm using that time to prep for tour. Then I like shower, get cute. And then I will like see people. Then I will take calls. Then I'll meet with clients. Then I'll film for my TikTok, like whatever needs to happen. And like, I did not have that three years ago. I was the girl who woke up every day being like, oh my God, this is tomorrow. I have to tell people about it. It's like, nobody's going to be able to come to your class. Nobody's going to be able to come to your thing if you tell them the day before. And I still have to battle myself because I really love being spontaneous and being like this tomorrow for free. But you've showed me that you actually can have both. If you have enough of a structure, like you can be spontaneous in that because you have these like communication channels built for your community, which I love so much. So thanks for the structure, Ashley. Kate, thanks for the hype. Like, damn, can I hire you? Yeah, just like compliment me all day. Honestly, that actually is my job. Like if I could be, (laughs) this is part of my gift. Like if I could be just like an internet cheerleader and just like go on people's Instagrams all day long and be like, yes, girl, get it. Oh my God, love this. Like I always joke that I'm not your cool friend. I'm your warm friend. And <laughs> Stop it. That's so cute. Yeah. You are, though. I know. It's on brand. Well, Kate, I mean, you are, if anything, if anybody is listening to this, I hope if there is one only thing you take from this, it is that you are allowed to do whatever you want. Yes. You're allowed to do yes. the creative thing, the analytical thing, the thing that makes you big money, the thing that makes you sporadic money the thing that lights you up, the thing that doesn't, but you're going to figure it out. You're allowed to do all of it and you're allowed to have it be easy and aligned and be relentless in your pursuit of it because you did not find it right away. It took you really staying patient and loving to yourself to be committed to, I will find how this works. That is something very admirable, just so you know, Kate. I love that. Yeah, there's always a creative solution. Period. But it didn't feel like that, Mm -hmm. you know, like at the time, I'm sure it felt very much like, am I ever going to figure this out? Is this right for me? Am I, am I really trying to do this? Who am I? You know, every other day, every other day. So just know that like, if you feel like that in the moment, if you're like, this isn't going to work for me, you're like, I'm never going to find my way. It's just like, I don't know if this is right for me. That just be relentless in your pursuit of it. It will come together. It will, will, will come together. Hard work works, baby. And that's what I love Hard about work. your integrity, about how you'll really say like, okay, yeah, you were able to do all this with all your four businesses and everything after 10 years of corporate, of like learning everything. And it's like, with under- people like completely overlook. I'm like, you know, they're like, you work so fast in your business. And I'm like, I worked for 10 years. It and then you like did 10. it for yourself. So just know, like, if you're like me coming into Ashley's space and maybe you're a creative or maybe you do a bunch of side jobs or like you're a gig worker, 
like just know that it is going to take some time. If I can just like impart some advice right now, like it is going to yeah, take some time it. to like learn your structures and like learn how tech works and like learn how an email platform works. And it honestly, it takes way longer than you think it's going to take. Like you might, I came into your space. I was like, oh, I could like make a website in a day. It's like, try two months, try like, and that would be quick, you know, but like, that's the kind of like blindness that I had coming into this space where I literally thought like a, a a reasonable to-do list item for a day was make website. It's like, no girl. (laughs) I'm like, build website have lunch, create six words of content. Literally. <laughs> like I, it's like, it's this cute thing. And like a lot of the creatives come into my space. They're like, I want to write a feature film. I'm like, cool. Like, let's break that down into let's tiny care. little pieces. Yeah. Let's learn how to create routines. Let's learn how to take care of our mental health. Let's learn how to like reach for mentors. And so sure. I really think that it's going to take longer. If you don't have that business background, like I did not have, which I really think that all arts programs should have some kind of like business entrepreneurial type of component to them because we are, we come out of school lost, like straight up. So just know it is going to take a while to learn all that. But yo, when I was in it these last three years, it felt like it was taking forever. And you guys, I it was crying. I would come to Ashley melting down, being like, this is not going to happen. Like, this is so stupid. Like, I'm not making enough money. Like, I've kind of left the shore of my old life where I was like running around like crazy. And I'm trying to build this new life of like actually regenerative structures where I can actually do my work at the highest level. And it's so tempting to go back to that shore of where it was comfortable and what you know, and just running around like a chicken with your head cut off. But like you have to just keep swimming because you will get to the other side, but you need strong mentors. You need a group of people who are going to surround you, who know what you're going through, who are also in a growth mindset. Thank God I have my husband who's like total growth mindset. Thank God I have the doers. Thank like all my friends, like just people that are around you that will help you get to the other side because it's hard work. But after three years, I've learned so much. My brain has grown so much. Like even just now, I'm putting my tour together. I'm having to set up an event, right? I'm having to set up email automations for my attendees, for my audience members. Like this is a indie DIY tour that we're doing up the California coast. And I am like managing it like a boss. Like I'm scheduling all of our content in later I am like, yes, I like did all the branding because you taught me how to do branding. Like I am so empowered as an artist because I have business tools and like that's where I'm really, really excited to just keep going. And even like on the man on the phone with my manager, I might be signing with new representation out here and I'm going through the legal contract with her. I know what the legal terms are where I'm having an eye level conversation about it. I'm not just floating around being like, I'm an artist. I don't know sure. how to read legalese. It's like, no, we are serious here, people. Yeah. You know, I think it's empowering because you start to realize I can do anything, you know, it's speaking a new language, right? If you generally understand how French works, you can probably have a conversation. You know what I mean? I'm just so proud of you. I'm so proud to watch everything that you've done. Now, let us. Okay, so obviously you're selling your portal to B2B businesses. If people are full time people who have corporate businesses, because I do have some people in my corporate life who still listen. Maybe they have like wellness programs that they're interested in joining. We'll put the link of that in the show notes so that they can come find you. You also have your creative circle called the Wonder Well, where you bring people together and you do the artist way. I don't think, do you only do the artist way or there's other things you do? Yeah. So the creative circles at Wonder Well, I started doing artist way circles by Julia Cameron. And that's actually what went viral on my TikTok last week because the artist way is like having yeah. a moment right now. And so I facilitate this 12-week program called The Artist Way, which I really recommend, honestly, just for anyone. It's really about just like Mm -hmm. recovery work of your inner child, opening to a sense of wonder, really like looking around your whole life and being like, yes, I love this. And being in an active sort of co-creator relationship role with like you and the universe. 
So it's a little bit of woo woo, but it's all like it's called a, a spiritual path to higher creativity. So there is like a spiritual element to it, but you can like make that your own. But really what it does is it puts you on the ground and it gives you practical tools to actually get in the flow of your creative energy. And that might go anywhere. It might go into a business. It might go into your family. It might go into like your job. Everything and everyone is creative. And then out of those artist way circles, so at this point, I facilitated over 150 people through the artist way, which is like incredible. And so many lives have been changed, like people getting the job of their dreams, moving across the country, booking that role, falling in love, breaking up with a toxic, abusive ex. Like I've just seen people really take their power back through that process. And so mm. it's created this incredible community of interdisciplinary artists, creatives, humans, leaders who wanted to keep meeting. So then I created what's called the Well membership. And it's for artists and creatives in process. And that's where we do our thing of like at the beginning of a season. It's a little bit different than the quarterly schedule, okay? So we're in summer solstice, the fall equinox, the winter solstice. It's all very timed with nature and the seasons. And we set intentions and I lead embodiment work. And that's where I really lead the creative embodiment work. So, of course, like the Wonderwell Embodiment Studio has like yoga, meditation, guided journaling, breathwork practices, more fitnessy stuff. In the well, I'm really able to work with artists on an embodiment level of like really tapping into their artist's body and like getting into mm. their expression of whatever it is they're doing. And this is work that was sort of yeah, maybe it's because I'm an actor. I went to theater school and I'm like working on embodying different characters and things like that. It's sort of accumulation of all that. But it's it translates into so many different arenas because we're all playing different roles in different areas of our lives. So help. It's giving you a place to really practice that, to get clear about that, to show up in that, to be in a small, intimate community of other people who are really creating something. So I love that that's like on the creative side of Wonderwell. It's a whole little ecosystem. But, but you're missing two really wonderful bebes, which are Wesa yeah. and your new group. Remind me the name. Yeah. So that's all like the Wonderwell side. So Wonderwell is like my interdisciplinary creative studio and community. And then my artist side, like me, Kate Bone, artist. <laughs> like well, these are other things I'm doing. So I have, I'm in two music projects, Wesa which I mentioned. The spell H-U-E-S. Yes. You click the link in the show notes or go check it out on Spotify. Please continue. Yeah, it's a dark femme pop project that was born. No, it's so good. (laughs) It is so good. Sorry. I am the, like, it says like a thousand listens or something. They're all me. Like it is, I'm maybe not. That, that, that like acts like no one else is listening to it. That's not true. It is so good. I, I can't get enough. It's on all the me time playlists. Everyone, people will randomly text me and be like, who is this artist? This is so good. And I'm like, no big deal. That's Kate, my client. So sweet. Yeah. That's the co-creation between me and my dear friend Froggy. And I absolutely could not have made that record at all without her. She produced it all. We co-wrote everything together. I'm the singer in the project. Well, she's just as incredible then. Give her my accolades. Yeah, she is incredible. You should actually, we should put her in the show notes too, because her artist project is like so sweet. And like, you guys need to listen to it. It's just like, oh, you just need to experience it. So Wesa was created with her and it was a total departure from everything I've ever done. I'm like an acoustic singer, songwriter, sort of folk artist, sort of by trade and how I came up. And so that really pushed me into like, more using beats and more of a pop sound. Some of it's very anthemic, like this new, the new singles that are coming out are like even bigger sounds. Just like really. Trust me, you gave me a sneak peek and I was like jaw on the ground. On Ashley's birthday, I sent her an unreleased track on Slack, you guys. That's the level And I was like, this is, (laughs) oh, and Wesa, speaking of like, money making channels through art we just got one of our songs licensed in a movie that's coming out i know so that's huge that was the goal that was the goal yeah it was like a sync project so to be licensed for film and tv so we just got our first sync 
We're so excited and we're hoping for more. So if you're a filmmaker, if you're making movies or TV, put Waysa in your shows. It, we really created it. We wanted it to feel cinematic. We wanted it to feel emotional. We were like imagining different scenes and different scenarios that the music could play into. So I'm really excited to see where it lands. Yeah. And then your new band. Yeah. So this is actually... An even older band. I've been with this band for like oh, wow. five. I didn't- yeah, I've been with this band for like five years. And we wrote all this acoustic folk Americana music. It's funny how life works out, kind of. I had never, I've never been in a band. I always just did my solo singer-songwriter project under my maiden name, Caitlin Huey. And these guys saw me at a show and they came up to me and they're like, hey, like, would you want to put some songs together for this Venice art crawl in Venice? I was like, sure. So I go, we prep, we learn a ton of covers. We play in somebody's front yard in the Venice canals. It was like an amazing show. People loved it. And then I'm thinking like, OK, on to the next gig. Like I'll rehearse with people, do a show and then just like back to my solo project or whatever. And I'll never forget one of the guys. He goes so do you want to like meet up next Wednesday? And I was like, for what? (laughs) You're like, I don't get it. And he was like, well, like to like be, you know, to to just write songs and practice and like practice again and stuff together. And I was like, oh, you mean like kind of like be a band? Like, I feel like he was like asking me to like be his girl. You know, you're like married. I I was was fully married at the time, but I've never had somebody like formally kind of like ask me in a way to like join a at the time. I hadn't had somebody formally ask me to join a creative project at the time. So I was like, oh, this is so thrilling. And we went and I was just like wide eyed. Like I had never done this before. I had never played with other musicians like this. I had never written, co-written with people. And every Wednesday night we would meet, we would like drink a glass of whiskey, write some folk songs. And then right when the pandemic hit, we had just started like playing out more. We were playing at restaurants in Venice and different shows around L.A. We were playing at Townhouse Venice, if you know, you know, and that underground speakeasy was so cool. And then the pandemic hit and we were just like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? And then I fell into Wesa and I went into Wesa land. And then the guys came back and they were like, look, we need to record. We have 12 original songs. Like, we need to record this. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And I'm a big fan. One of the things I teach at Wonderwell is like really completing the creative cycle. And the final stage is like, you have to release it. Like, you have to put it out there so that people can Mm -hmm. see you in the light and get the transmission of like whatever that chapter was, whatever that moment was. So this is a record we've essentially been working on for five years, and it's finally coming out. And we're going to tour it up and down the California coast. Oh my gosh. Actually, I want to come. By the time this comes out, everything will be out. So you can look them up. They're the wholesome. We are the wholesome on Spotify, Apple Music. We have a couple music videos out on YouTube. Go check us out. Your voice is so amazing. I'm going to have to talk to the team and see if we can get like, way some music at the beginning or something oh yeah if, it, if you're gonna do it on spotify you can just like embed it in there i don't know it's just so good thanks babe i just love you so much kate i love having you first of all i've loved working with you to help build your foundation but having you in the doers the past year and a half two years has just been so so incredible to watch you grow thank i love you. having you inside of there thank you so much you're such a champion for women in business. I'm so, so grateful for you. And you're never getting rid of me. So there. I hope not. (laughs) Never. Never leave. No. Have we ever met in person? No, girl. Crazy. That's dumb, actually. That's (laughs) stupid. And I'm angry. Isn't that so funny that I like feel so close to you, but I've actually like never met. I know. I need to like hug you. How tall are you? Five, seven. I'm five, four. Everybody, when they meet me, they're like, you're a munchie. You're like a yeah. teeny little. Oh, my gosh. So, so cute. Yeah. I love it. I Everyone can't wait to them squeeze so you. I know. I need to Maybe make a Maybe at one of the, like, Bum- doers nice. retreats or something. Yeah. Guys, you are so lucky to have met one of my favorite people in the world, Kate Bone. I'm sure you picked up on it. She's just the best. Kate, where can we follow you on Instagram? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Kate Bone, and it's Kate with three underscores bone and you can find me on tiktok at kate bonehead i'm a real idiot over there and you can find the wonder well at 
the creative side of Wonderwell at the.wonderwell and then the embodiment side of Wonderwell at wonderwell.embodiment. Beautiful. Yeah. Come hang out. Do you have a website? Yeah. It's xxkatebone.com. Beautiful. Kate, thank you so much for being so generous with your story, with your heart, with your time. I so appreciate you. Oh my gosh. I love you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you guys for another episode of The Unfiltered Entrepreneur, and I hope to see you next time.